All right, if you turn to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. We'll start in verse 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up, and that shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But, she, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and ye yourselves thrust out, and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, they are, they are last which shall be first, and there are first which shall be last. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Jehovah Yeshua, I just come to you this afternoon and I pray for your Ruach Kodesh. I pray you fill me, Yeshua. I pray you bless this message. I pray... Jehovah, you give us ears to hear and eyes to see. And I pray for the hearts and the minds, Jehovah, and those that listen, Jehovah, that they'll dig deep for the foundation, that they'll understand your words like a child, Jehovah. And they'll take this message, Jehovah. And if they're not saved, they'll repent. True repentance, Jehovah. And I pray you bless this message and use it for your glory. May it bring forth much fruit. I pray Yeshua, Mashiach, I pray in thy precious name. So be it. So last Sabbath, we ended with Luke chapter 13 and in verse 27. All right? And, the, and the, look at the verse, end of verse 25. It says, When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Last Sabbath, I preached on many who claim that they know Yeshua and where he's from. But Yeshua doesn't know them. And then in the end of verse 27... Yeshua says, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Many claim they know Yeshua, but in works they deny him. They work iniquity. So Yeshua says, I know you not whence ye are. So they deny Yeshua with their life, yet they claim Yeshua. So Yeshua will deny them. And what does he say? There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Look at verse 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, Master, are there few? Are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in. At the straight gate. For many I say unto you. Will seek to enter in. And shall not be able. Yeshua replied with. How many are there be. How many. Are there few that be saved. And Yeshua replies with. Strive to enter in. At the straight gate. You strive. What's Yeshua implying. To strive implies a diligence, a fortitude, a mindset. What is repentance? What is it? Is it a work? Is repentance a work? Is striving a work? 
Because Yeshua says, strive to enter in. Enter in in the kingdom. Okay? How do you enter in? How are you saved? The question was, when Yeshua was asked, if there are few that be saved, there's few, not many, few. He didn't say there's not a few, but there's many. He didn't deny it. He said there's few. Okay? And then he says to them, strive to enter in at the straight gate, the narrow gate. In another gospel, he says, for broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction, and there be many which enter in thereat. The broad way leads to destruction. What is the broad way? What is the narrow way? Why are we going to strive in the narrow way? What is the broad way? Yeshua is telling you something over and over in the Gospels. Yeshua is teaching salvation. He's preaching the gospel. He's telling you what is required to enter in. Forget what you've heard. Forget what some church doctrine is. Forget the history. Why don't you just read for yourself? Read the scriptures. Read what the scripture says. Read the words of Yeshua. Read His doctrine. Read his words. Listen to Him. What does Yeshua say? The broad way leadeth to destruction. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. The broad way. Here I'll help you out. Is faith only gospel. We've been touching upon this. Because I'll tell you what. Predominantly when you have a faith only gospel. Go and look at the sad state of this country and you wonder why this country is so messed up and you're, and you're going to say there's many Christians in this country? This country is a Christian country. We have a godly heritage. This country is of hell. And the more you get around churches and the more you get around church and the people, you're going to see no difference or you're going to see things that are worse among so-called so God Yeshua's people. You're going to see stuff that even I'd say 10, maybe 15 years ago, you wouldn't see. And even before that, you wouldn't see it. So what's going on? What's going on is you have people teaching and preaching a faith-only gospel... They don't even know what repentance is. So we're covering the foundation of repentance for the last year. We're building upon the baptism of John. We're building upon the doctrine where, that Yeshua built faith upon. When he starts to preach, he begins to preach in the gospel and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So we're going to go by what Yeshua is building. Because he's the wise master builder. He's the carpenter. And he's laid the foundation in Zion. Himself being the chief cornerstone. The chief doctrine. The doctrine of Messiah. And many people, they, they claim they can read. And they claim they're a Christian. They claim they're saved. Yet they don't even read and understand what Yeshua is telling them over and over and over again. This is all Yeshua taught. He taught repentance from the heart. He taught it in the pureness of the heart. That is where you are saved. That is where it begins. Not like last week when I preached, even the devils and the demons believe and they tremble. So according to these faith-only people, as I mentioned it last Sabbath, that the devils are saved because they believe and they tremble. According to them, that's their perverted gospel. 
Listen to what Yeshua is when he's asked, if there are few that be saved, Yeshua replies, strive to enter in. Strive. Give diligence. Have a fortitude. Have a mindset. What is repentance? Again, I ask, is repentance a work? Did Yeshua say, do this and do that? And this and that, that you may enter in? He said, strive. There's things implied. And there's things that you're supposed to do, like keep Torah. Keep the commandments. But what did Yeshua say? Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of of the scribes and of the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter in. How many times did Yeshua say these words? Enter in. Enter in. Enter in. Go and mark it. Go and study it. Go and read it. Why is Yeshua talking about entering in? Why does he say at the end of verse 25, And ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, the gate, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. They will not enter in. Alright? One of the first things people need to repent of, and it's sad, the very first things people need to repent of is to read and obey the words of Yeshua. It's right there. A lot of scriptures, there. it's in red. Yeshua's words are in red. Obey Yeshua. Alright? Many will say unto him, Lord, Lord, Master, Master, open unto us. If he is your Lord, Yeshua says, and I be your Master, and if you love me, keep my commandments. Why do you say and call him Lord and do not the things that he says? Turn to Matthew chapter 21. Gospel of Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. And we'll start in verse 28. Yeshua says, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work. Go work. Listen to the word. Go work. It's what Yeshua said. Go work today in my vineyard. This is Adam's work. What did Jehovah do? He put man in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. The work of Adam. Man was created for what? To sit there and do nothing? To work. He says, son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them two did the will of his father? They say unto him, the first, Yeshua saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots 
go into the kingdom of God before you. He's talking to the scribes and Pharisees, okay? The chief priests and the elders. He's telling the chief priests and the elders, Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Why? Because at first they say they will not. But then they repent and they go into the vineyard and they do the works that's required. Okay? These repented. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. He refers this to the publicans and the harlots. What did we re read at the end of Luke? 13 verse 30. And behold, there, there are last which shall be first, and the first which shall be last. What is first? The chief. The chief priest. The religious people. The chief, the chief priest, the high priest, they are the first, they shall be last. Okay? Then he says, here at the end of Matthew 21, verse, end of verse 31, Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into, they enter in. They enter it, they're able to enter in into the kingdom of God before you. Why? I have a question. Do these publicans and harlots, after they repent, do they remain publicans and harlots? You're going to be surprised. Some people, they say, they repent after. Let me ask you a question. If these publicans and sinners repent, how long do they keep their jobs? A couple days? A couple weeks? A couple months? A couple years? Their whole life? Their whole life? And they get to enter in. There's people that I know that that is what they teach. They say it not even knowing what they're saying. Okay? There are some wicked and vile people who would take these verses and they would say, see, repentance comes later. Because verse 29 says, He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. Okay? That's how wicked they are. How long do they remain a publican and a harlot? A few weeks? A few months? Do you think that this is the repentance that Yeshua is teaching? You won't find one verse where it even implies that these publicans and harlots remained public and hearted the day they repented. They repented and never turned back to their own vomit. They never went back like a dog. They never go back to Egypt. They don't turn back. That's true repentance. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 1. Apostle Paul says here in Ephesians 5 verse 1, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Mark that down. As dear children. 
and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given Himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. You repent of it, the Apostle Paul says. Let it not be named one once more among you. Let it not be, not even once, be named among you. You see? You read it. You read. You understand what repentance is. It's all throughout the Scripture. As become saints, believers, those that are entering in, you behave the way as those that are entering in. Verse 4, Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Look at verse 5, For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes before formerly darkness, but now ye are light in Jehovah. Walk as children of light. How do you walk as a child of light if you have a dark heart? If you've never repented, you've never been born again, you've never been saved, how are you going to walk as a child of light? You can't. So you're going to stand in church and you're going to teach everyone, just believe, be like I am, a twofold child of hell, religiously, but lost, professing Yeshua, but lost. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where this country and the church is at. Teaching you nothing. Teaching you believe. And at the end of the day, how many times does Yeshua warn you and say, For many shall come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And Yeshua is going to turn around and reply, from whence ye are, I know you not. I don't know where you're from. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Don't, don't they read what Yeshua is warning? You want to be one of those at the end, standing at the judge at the door, at the gate? And he's going to look at you and say, depart from me. But I went to church all my life. I gave tithes. I did this. I sang songs. We even went preaching. We cast out devils in thy name. We've done many wonderful works. But Yeshua says, I know you not. Yeshua says, Make the tree good and its fruit good, else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For you shall know them by their fruit. It's the heart. Yeshua says to strive to enter in. Yeshua, when he talks about the harlots and the publicans entering in before them, he knows that these publicans and harlots repented. They repented from the heart. No longer a covetous. No longer an unclean person. No longer a fornicator. The Apostle Paul says here in Ephesians, For this ye know, that no whoremonger, harlot, nor unclean person, nor covetous publican, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. He says, you're not entering in. What's the Apostle Paul preaching and teaching? The same doctrine 
on the same foundation of repentance as a wise master builder. Take heed how ye build thereon. For no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Yeshua Mashiach. And what is that foundation? Repent of your sins, turn from it, and believe. The foundation of repentance, it starts there. What did Yeshua say in Luke 13, 23? Strive to enter in. You enter a gate, a door. You're going into. Yeshua says he stands at the door. He knocks. If any man hear and open unto him the heart, enter in, purify the heart. He's going to judge you. Yeshua, they say, they did. he needs no man to tell him about any man, for he knows what's in man. He knows what's in you. The judge stands at the door, and he warns, he says, you will not enter in if you are not worthy. If Yeshua knows not whence ye are, you will not enter in. If you're not of a sheep, you will not enter in. If you're not born again, you will not enter in. If you've never truly repented, you will not be saved. All of these scriptures, Yeshua gives warning to strive to enter in. Why? Because Yeshua explains it over and over and over again. Turn to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, starting verse 1. Yeshua answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, again, he speaks again. He speaks again and over again. Verse 2, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. They won't come. They refuse. Verse 4. Again he sent forth other servants saying. Tell them which are bidden. Behold I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. And all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. And went their ways. One to his farm. Another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants. And entreated them spitefully. And slew them. But when the king heard thereof. He was wroth. And set forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Be ye worthy to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yeshua says, But they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, Bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. So God allows this easy belief of them to go. He allows it right here. Go and bid all, as many as you find. But how many are truly saved? How many are saved are there few that be saved which ones are saved of all the bidden guests which ones verse 11 and when the king came to see the guests he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment and he saith unto him friend how camest thou in hither having not a wedding garment and he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer, outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. 
Notice Yeshua gives that same parable. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Go back to Luke chapter 13. Luke 13, verse 27. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So Yeshua talks about the man that hath not on his wedding garments. Those he talks about that Yeshua does not know whence they're, they are, where they're from. He says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. He knows their heart. He knows that in their heart, these people have never truly repented. They just talk the name of Yeshua. They say, Lord, Lord. But in their heart, Yeshua says, they're full of evil. They're whitewashed sepulchers. They're full of dead man's bones and unclean things. The Apostle Paul goes over it. He says, This ye, ye know, that no whoremonger nor unclean person shall enter into the kingdom of God, of Christ and of God. They won't enter in. They won't taste of the supper. They are not worthy. Turn to Luke chapter 12. Gospel of Luke chapter 12. Verse 45. But, and if that servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself. What does he not prepare? What doesn't he prepare for? His heart. And prepared not himself, neither did. Doing. Faith with works. Neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be, much be required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask more. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. From henceforth there shall be five in one household, divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. All right? Hard doctrine because the axe is laid at the root of the trees and that's where it starts at the root of the trees turn to uh, turn to Luke chapter 15 Luke chapter 15 again Yeshua is teaching on salvation Luke chapter 15 verse 1 then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Verse 3, And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if ye lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, 
until he find it. And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Think of the prodigal son, the parable of the prodigal son. My son was lost. He was dead. The father rejoices over him. Verse 7, I say unto you that likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. One of the ninety-nine. What's Yeshua giving example of? Let me ask you a question. Yeshua says, There shall be joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. Then in the end of verse 10, Yeshua says, Likewise I say unto you, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Let me ask you a question. It's a simple question. These angels that rejoice over the sinner, just one, because there's were worth in the sight of God much. Over one sinner that repented. These angels that rejoice in the presence of the Holy God, of Yeshua, in the holy heaven. These angels that joy over one sinner that repenteth. Let me ask you a simple question. Do these same angels rejoice over that one sinner that repenteth? Let's say that harlot that repents. Do they rejoice over that harlot when she goes back to work, to her night job that night? Do you think those angels are rejoicing in heaven when they see this so-called harlot? that repented, go back and be a prostitute? Do those angels rejoice in heaven over a one Christian who says they're saved, who says they repented, and goes out and they, they keep sinning? Do you think those angels in heaven are rejoicing over you? Do you think that angel in heaven is saying, yeah, go harlot, go, we rejoice. You keep your job. You keep working. You stay a harlot. You can repent later. Just believe in Yeshua. We, oh, we rejoice because you believe in Yeshua. Do those angels in heaven rejoice when the demons in, in the earth roaming the heavens, when they fall at Yeshua's feet and worship Him and they profess, I know who thou art. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Do you think those Holy angels in heaven rejoice over demons, over their faith in Christ, because they believe. They believe, as James says, for the devils believe and tremble. You show me faith only. You show me that repentance is just a change of mind, and you can keep in sin. That it's not a whole 100% turning from all sin. A 180 degree turn. A cleaning out. 100% cleaning out of the heart. That's repentance. You're going to tell me that those angels who rejoice over one sinner that repenteth, they keep rejoicing when that harlot keeps, keeps her whoring. And they're going to welcome that harlot because she's quote unquote repented. And she's going to enter the kingdom? You're going to answer me yes to that question? And you're going to sit there and you're going to tell me 
Faith only? You're saved by just believing in Yeshua? You're going to sit there and you're going to argue and you're going to go against every word that Yeshua taught. I'm just, I'm just giving you chapter. I'm just skipping around chapter. I'm skipping around the Gospels. Showing you all that Yeshua taught on salvation. How much He warned you. And how much He says, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, Many shall seek to enter in, and they shall not be able to. Yeshua warns us, Depart from me, ye workers of lawlessness. When, you, when is that harlot going to repent? Next week, after she believes in Yeshua? The following month, the following year, ten, give her 10 years to repent. No, give her 15. Give her 30 years. Huh? Salvation. Yeshua says strive. Strive to enter in. Is repentance a work? Is striving a work? Like I said, it's a heart attitude. Strive to enter in. Purify. He that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. The Apostle Paul says, Let it not be once named among you as become saints. Be worthy, the Apostle Peter says, of the calling, of your calling, and of your election. The church is supposed to be holy, supposed to be spotless, supposed to keep your garments white. Wedding garments. Pure. That's what the church should be. You know what the church is today? It's a harlot. It is that harlot. Mystery Babylon. Repent is 100% turning of your heart, your life, your soul, and your spirit. Turn to Luke chapter 18. Religion is not going to save you either. And Yeshua taught that. People are missing it. Okay? Ye Yehovah is going to sift you. Just like he told Apostle Peter... He sift you, your heart. And he told, the Apostle Peter says, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. But Yeshua says, I'll pray for you. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You see, you're going to be tried. The parable of the sower, the winds are going to come. And the storms are going to blow against, your, against you. And if you don't have a foundation of righteousness, you're going to fall by the wayside. Yeshua says, few there be that be saved. One out of the four is a good and honest heart. He's giving you warning. He's saying, make the tree good and its fruit good. You choose it. You repent. You got to start there. You convert your heart. Soul, your being. Walk, the Apostle Paul says, as children of light. Yeshua says, if your eye be whole, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye be evil, be dark. Yeshua asks a question, how great is that darkness? You better convert. You better be pure in heart. This is where it starts from. Salvation starts in the heart. Repent. Turn from all evil, all darkness, all sin, the will of sin, the thought of, you repent. Okay? Luke chapter 18. Okay? The first parable, talking about keeping on, striving, don't faint. Okay? You're going to face trials. You're, you're going to face it. You're going to be tested. See, that's another thing. I don't understand. Who, where are these people from? They're never chastened. They're never tried. They go on yet in their sin. I don't even see stumbling blocks before some of these people. 
Verse 9. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Verse 14, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. What's the difference? The publican repents. He sees himself as but a speck of dirt. A speck of dirt. Garbage. Not worthy, it says. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. There's your remorse. There's your shame. There's your contriteness. There's your brokenness. There's your humbleness. There's your meekness. There's your asking Yeshua for forgiveness. That's called, all of this is called repentance. It's all of it. Now that person that's justified, this publican, went to his house justified with that prayer. Now, are you going to tell me, is he justified if he keeps doing all the things he was doing before? There are going to be angels in heaven rejoicing over him. He's going to keep doing it. Yeshua to told you, many shall come unto me and say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Yeshua say, depart from me. I know you not. See, Yeshua knows the heart. He knows the heart of this Pharisee. How arrogant he was. How self-righteous he was. And he knows the heart of this publican. He sees the heart. Verily I say unto you, whosoever. Alright, let's go to Luke chapter 18. Let's continue. Verse 15, and they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Yeshua called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise Enter therein. Listen to what Yeshua just said. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. You humble yourself like a child. Your heart you don't deny your sin. You don't deny what you are. You acknowledge and confess your sin and you repent of your sin and you will to sin no more. Just like a child asks for forgiveness, right? You're going to do it again? Uh-uh. You're going to keep doing that? No. You learn your lesson? Yes. You're forgiven. All right. Verse 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Yeshua said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, saving one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. 
Now when Yeshua heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. You're lacking. What are you lacking? Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Yeshua saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Remember I told you, how many times did Yeshua say those words? Enter in, enter in. You shall know, wise, enter therein. How many times did Yeshua say those words? Enter into the kingdom of God, enter in. He's telling you who's getting in and who's getting who will not go in. Yeshua is saying these things. Go read what Yeshua says. For it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, These things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and, not, and, 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 have, and have followed thee and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come, life, ever, life everlasting. You see, another part of repentance is you sell all that you have. You give all your life to Yeshua. All of it. The riches you have, you give it up. The things you hold on to, you give it up. This is also repentance. This is also laying the foundation of eternal life. Yeshua says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You give it all up. Your whole life. The things you think is of value, you give it up. And you smite yourself upon the breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Repentance came first. God looks at the heart. Confession is made with the mouth. Yeshua is Jehovah. It starts with repentance. Yeshua says, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall no wise enter therein. Repentance is from within you. It's from your being. It's from your heart, your spirit. Yeshua knows your heart. He knows if you're a good tree or you're a corrupt evil tree. Right, let's pray.